So Tweetney's, yeah. Tweetney's been uh, picked up quite a lot recently. Yeah, That's it's... what it is to start with for everybody. So Tweetney's a Twitter aggregator. What that basically means is that we look at all the URLs that all the users are posting um, and from those we then count how many repeats of those links there are. So there's about, two, at the moment, 200,000 or so stories posted every single day onto Twitter. So, and as it grows, the more and more stories uh, get posted. So out of all those, we pick the, one, the most popular ones, we rank them, and we then let you find them on our, on our site. So it's, it's, a, it's a quick way to find what the hot um, subject. So that might be a blog post, it might be a news site, it might be just a picture of Stephen Fry. It can, can be almost anything. You're almost better than Reuters now. You said you picked up a story a while ago, much faster than the press. What was the? Yeah, so the the uh, story of the plane going into the Hudson, we picked it up within about 30 minutes. Purely that this guy that uh, posted the photo was an unknown. He had, I think, a couple of hundred followers at the time. But that doesn't matter to our service because we pay attention to people uh, irrelevant of who they are. So if if they've got a story and it gets retweeted enough and we spot that it's uh, an important story then we will push it to our front page immediately so it doesn't matter if you're CNN uh, or anything you have no more ranking uh, on our service than anyone else. You, you could surely uh, be seen as a threat to these services maybe or maybe you could just be seen as a tool that they could use. I, I think uh, this whole uh, medium is a threat to uh, traditional journalism. Or you know, blogs have already started, ta you know, taking some large chunks out of the traffic to your traditional news sites, such as New York Times, and the real-time web in terms of Twitter is, you know, just con continuing that because it gives a live, you know, blogging will continue, but. Twitter is giving a live access to those blogs, so people, a, a typical blogger these days will write a story and put it straight up on Twitter. So whereas before you would have had to have waited for people on Google Reader to have found that blog post or the real time search side. And, uh, yeah, so it, it gives a they because they will then post that onto Twitter immediately, and so that and we facilitate that. We have a set of widgets that bloggers can put onto their site, so we're already on Mashable, Read, Write, Web, Znet, CNET, load of the, uh, you know, the biggest sites out there, and that really just is a removal of a barrier in that it's one button press to then uh, push that story back out onto Twitter, which is what, what's, you know, why it's speeding up the, the news delivery service. And, uh I think you did a talk about the end, you know, journalism and how that's all sort of changing very quickly and how perhaps the incumbents are not going to be, or perhaps aren't incumbent anymore. Yeah, I, I don't have anything particularly against typical journalism. It's, it's the format in which it's delivered at the moment and what the, the newspapers aren't understanding is they're digging around for new revenue models, thinking about micropayments when the, it's already out there. Huffington Post, TechCrunch, the really, really big sites are not blogs anymore. And they haven't woken up to that, that there is a revenue model out there, but they haven't learned how to engage with the customer, give the page views to get the uh, page impressions to deliver you know, context to their consumers. So there's nothing wrong with the ecosystem out there, it's just that they haven't woken up to it yet. We just need more people like Jeff Jarvis doing journalism 2.0 courses. And... Yeah, it, it'll just take, it will take more and more papers to fail uh, and then I don't think it'll be a gradual thing, I think there'll be a, there'll be a sudden point where they all get it and there'll be a tipping point and over the course of three, four months uh, things will suddenly change. I still think we're a number of years away from that. They're, you know, just like the music industry, they're still, you know, cling, clinging on to, you know, that there's a hope for their, their model. But there's nothing wrong with, you know, typical journalism, going out, finding the stories. We still need the people that find the stories. It's the delivery to the consumer that the is changing. That the, uh, the Guardian's already getting there. It's already first to the game in terms of the UK mainstream media anyway. Yes, very much so. They, they are they they are doing the, by far the best in terms of adopting open standards such as RSS, supplying full content in their feeds, and they are they are tackling the issues in terms of licensing of photos in those feeds. They're not it's was not it, was it you that posted tweeted uh, about the terms of service? 
like all the papers and stuff. Yeah, like they, if you when you dig into it, the reality is it's not fully open. But you've got to applaud them for making the first step uh, along that way. There's I think we looked at all. You looked at I don't know if you or someone else. We looked at all the terms of service of all the mainstream media, and they all said that they weren't even allowed to be crawled by Google. So quite a strange. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously a lot of news out there about Associated Press, um, and it's a bit like. Um, a beast where the the head doesn't know what the legs are doing. That you know, there's you know, Associated Press has got so many hundreds of layers to it, and th th they're attacking Google and all the other news services that are actually getting Associated Press their coverage. You know, uh, they are supplier of content, and what they've got to realise is the the way they monetise that content has got to change. Um, so what about moving on to favourite? How's how's things going down at favourite? Favourites, uh, re in reality, favourite is TweetMeme. I think that's what people don't realise is what we built was a platform for news aggregation, for uh, pulling in images, videos from different services. So the original version of TweetMeme we built over a year ago, which kind of languished, it was a side project, uh, has gone completely. And what you're now seeing is as such a tentacle of our te technology platform just being delivered in a different source. So, Favourite will also undergo radical changes again over the next couple of months. Um, you know, blogging, um, social networks move so amazingly, rap uh, so amazingly rapidly, you know, and we have to cater for that. We, we think we're ahead of the game with Twitter and delivery of a service, but we need to get ahead of the game in terms of blogging again. And just, just quickly, for anyone who doesn't know, what's Favourite? Uh... Favourite is a news aggregation service for blogs and we pick the best content from the uh, uh, blogging out there. And we, uh, very similar to Twitter, we try and deliver tw uh, nyan um, channels of news on certain subject areas and make the whole experience uh, you know, uh, uh, easier to um, get into for the average user. And do you do the uh, content searching automatically or is it manual? Or how, do they, how do you keep the quality in there? Favourite uh, has a, a list of feeds that were user submitted and we still continue to get users to, uh, to submit content. But a lot of that, uh, again, we've learned a lot of things for over the last year of Favourite and uh, you'll see some big changes, as I said, in the next couple of months. I just remember at the web there's a big argument about whether you can have automated search of you know automated quality content search and recognition. Yeah, I, I think there's um, you know there's there's always the argument between automation and human interaction. Tech meme, popular tech aggregator service, they finally revealed what everyone suspected, which was there was a human editor as part of the automated process. We we have the same thing with uh, tweet meme and favorite. The you know editors can step in and uh, you know push things up, uh, you know whatever else. But it's the the reality out there is that computers uh, don't understand humans yet. So crowdsourcing is one way to do it. Um, using verticals to deliver deliver content on a certain topic, um, but computers can't really understand what I would personally like on any one day. So, you know, we're steering clear of that, but I don't think the AI is there. And uh, well, what's the future? What's happening? What's coming up in the next few months from you guys? Three memes gonna, is, uh, we're, scaling is our biggest problem now. Six million uh, widgets delivered every single day from our uh, servers. We're scaling, you know, to be able to cope with the growth, which is, you know, week on week is, you know, 50% growth. So we need to be able to cope with that and we'll, we'll just continue to extend the service. And in scaling, what sort of challenges do you see there? Are they technological challenges? Are they just hardware the, barriers? Or? The, the, it's, it was designed on Favourites platform, which is very scalable, but there's always bottlenecks that appear as you grow. Um, there are scalability issues in terms of customer support, engagement with the developer community we're building up. So it's, it's not... Well, yeah, we have a great team that uh, understands what the scaling problems are. So it's more, more, more of a worry for me is not, uh, you know, scale is, you know, growth is great. Uh, just being able to cope with, you know, the the human elements of it and people trying to scan, uh, cheat the service because there's always, as we grow, we know that people attempting to cheat it and get up on our top stories will always be an issue. So putting back to a uh, Twitter conversation, we were talking about that uh, earlier on, uh, just the last session there, about cheating to get Twitter followers. Yes. What do you think about the 
the paid for Twitter in terms of the you've got, now you've got a short I, 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 I think the, the services that have just come out in the last couple of weeks which actually actively encourage people to do things such as pay to clone your users so you can pay to have a service look at what's, uh, so, uh, who someone else is following and clone that which is just uh, the terms of service or favourite of Twitter need to be cleaned up and you know, that's a little could, bit too open. <laughs> a little in terms of that, because that's could what could, which you know, Twitter could um, destroy itself you know, in if it lets that sort of thing run rampant. Because the value that businesses are going to be paying legitimate customers to try and promote their brands on Twitter will, you know, come up against those that uh, you know are doing it in a uh, illegal uh, uh, manner or a immoral manner rather than illegal. Less than ideal. Less than ideal, and so that's got to be policed. Um, and uh, and Twitter, you know, Twitter is watching these things, but I'm sure the scale of it is massive. But you know, just like PayPal went through their problems with fraud in terms of pure money, because it, you, followers equates to money and therefore people will try and um, scam them. So it's just the same same problems. I mean, as someone was saying, million followers, million dollars, not much difference between the two. I think the, there's been a few people out there that have said one dollar per user. I think it's very hard, it depends on how you got those followers and how valuable they are. We would say our followers we've gained for tweet meme uh, are extremely valuable to us because they retweet our stories and when they retweet them, then other people retweet them. So I would put much higher value on our individual followers. But you guys have always been big on building communities. I mean, I think when you start a favorite, your blog had quite a few inbound links. And yeah, so favorite would grew yeah. from inbound links and TweetMeme, we've got some, something like 17,000 inbound links to TweetMeme already in a month and a half. Um, and that's because people are writing out about our um, widgets, writing about the service, and we foster that. We, we, we reach out to anyone who um, asks us questions, who writes, uh, who's, we've, uh, within a week we had people assisting in our WordPress plugin, uh, came back with patches to it, we thank them, we attribute them, you know, we're, so we're very much about fostering that. We've taken on a full-time community manager who will be looking after all the uh, various um, services we've got. It's quite a new, I suppose this is quite a new title, community manager, not many, certainly not many of the larger companies have heard of it. What will the community manager do? Community manager, it's, it's one of those things that a larger company probably wouldn't uh, like to have because there's very little direct return on investment. You've got to understand that it's very indirect. They look after the customers and they help promote the service and all of those are, are not going to result in direct sales, they're going to result in having happy uh, developers supporting us, answering questions out there on Twitter, answering questions on Facebook, building our forum up and you know so that's all very indirect things, you can't attribute um, much to it. So the community manager is basically to foster, you know, it's, it's, it's to foster development communities and then foster um, the growth of any of the channels and any anything else that we uh, that companies start paying us to promote. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Nick. That's great. And uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much.